Ah, uh, man, it's good to meet you, James. How are you doing? I'm great, Tony. Pleasure to meet you as well. How are you? I'm I'm great. How's the band? Every everybody okay? <laughs> Everybody's good. Yeah, I have uh, been flying all over. I just came back from Michigan for the premiere Wolfhound, but then on Monday I head to LA and we get right into rehearsals. So I'll be seeing a lot of them over the next three months. I hope you tour out here in Salt Lake City uh, at one point. I uh, we're playing forty four shows. I cannot remember if we're playing one out there, but I feel like we are. I feel like we must be or somewhere close by at least. Uh, and congratulations on Wolfhound. Uh, you know, when you approach something like this, it's, it can go one way or another, you know, and, and this is a brilliant film. I mean, it is so uh, thrilling. It's got everything in it and uh, great acting uh, due to you. Well, thank you. It's not, it's not just me. In fact, it never is. Um, <laughs> it quite literally takes a village um, especially on, you know, an independently financed film trying to be at this scale. And the fact that I'm going to say we, but they, from the special effects to the, the, the captains actually flying these World War II authentic aircraft, they made it at such a large scale. And I look at the trailer, I look at the movie, and I'm quite in awe that I'm a part of it, much less leading it. So just, just sitting here in such a space of gratitude that this movie's coming out and people get to see this incredible thing that we made. Uh, did you do a lot of research on, on, on Captain David Holden? Of course. Um, you know, tr we, we tried our best to make the time period as authentic as possible. And then personally, you know, I feel like I've had a bit of a weight and, and still do to some degree uh, to give respect to this character and to this period of time because my grandfather actually flew B-17s in really? World War II. He was shot down two times, saved his whole crew two times. So I went back to my dad and started asking questions. I remember some stories when I was a kid, but he passed when I was younger. Mm. And basically started talking through how he got his purple hearts, how he got the distinguished flying cross, how we got all these things I saw on the wall growing up, but never really resonated to me as they did since I started digging into this role. So every day would come into this, just trying my best to make it as respectful and authentic as possible. Now, now, being a musician, uh, it, are there rhythms and cadences in the acting roles you take on? Do you hear them? Absolutely. Uh, that's a fantastic question. There are quite a few correlations, I think, between being a musician and being an actor, even though a lot of them may not be obvious. Hmm. But patterns, the way in which we speak, the way in which you deliver a line, especially for comedy, but even for drama, having that type of, as you said, rhythm and cadence and, and background to kind of acknowledge why you're doing things, how you can do things differently, try different things. I mean, it's just another set of, uh, of tools in your toolkit as an actor. Uh, and, and speaking of music, the soundtrack to this is incredible. Gorgeous. The score, I mean, they, they created this entire thing from scratch. The amount of people and favors <laughs> went <laughs> into making this movie look the way that it does is remarkable. And I just want to thank everybody being a part of it when we just saw the screening in Michigan and we saw the credits you know I'm used to doing done quite a few independent films and it's like they're relatively short compared to a studio film these just keep going these there are so many more people that worked on this and even I had any idea you know the special effects and the prop houses and everything that came together and donated time and planes and it was remarkable yeah, I would imagine watching some of these dogfights, uh, you know, from a perspective of an actor looking, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that you saw some of this stuff going on. Uh, you know, that is an amazing talent to recreate some of that. Well, not only do we see these things going on, we were up in the plains. Mm -hmm. my, my first day in Virginia Beach was literally, hey, show up, here's your outfit, uh, we got... Um, half a day to do this, so get on in the back of that P-51. Yeah, we made makeshift like a little seat for you. Looks like you're flying, and here we go, going up. <laughs> and then we'll be on a radio with Mike Chate, the director, and be like, all right, here's the situation. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to start the dogfight banking left. Here, we're going to pick up on your line and go. And that's what I would do. I'd hold down the little talk back button in the airplane and start delivering the lines, and we'd be doing barrel rolls and backflips and, and, and dogfighting. Me pretending to do it, of course, behind the pilot. Do it for, you know, 20, 30 minutes. And so it felt like I was about to puke, come on down, lay in the fetal position for a little while. And so I felt like I could go back up and then be like, all right, let's do it again. And that was, that was literally day one. Wow. So uh, no better way to be immersed in the environment than that. And nothing, nothing like having a nice greasy lunch after something like that. I don't think I ate for the rest of that day. Yeah, <laughs> for the whole it's film. not really something you want to do when you're that nauseous. 
Uh, it looked like you guys were having a ball, though. You know, I mean, it's a very serious film, but, you know, the, the more serious the film, you know, the downtimes are, are a lot. That's where you let the pressure cooker off, you know. Absolutely. And with any project, if you're not going to enjoy it and have fun doing it, I think you're in the wrong profession. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, there are very serious moments. Of course, there are very difficult scenes and days, but it was awesome. I mean, who doesn't want to get to go and fly in a B-17 flying fortress? Like, are you kidding me? I got to actually take the reins and fly a B-25. How many people can say that? Okay. Even to this day, even if you are a pilot, um, I'm getting my pilot's license because of this, because of this movie. <laughs> I mean, just so remarkable, so much fun. And uh, God willing, I hope this is really just the first of, of many more action films. I, I hope so too, because you seem to be natural at, uh, at it. I mean, you, you, you seem like an athlete or you like physical roles and it shows. I appreciate that. Yeah, I mean, I've always trained kind of like an athlete because for a huge part, I want to be able to do movies like this. So since I was a kid, I'd be like, okay, how, what type of physique do I need? What type of, you know, athletic skill might I need? I'd look up what Tom Cruise was doing, what Ryan Reynolds was doing, what some of these people I looked up to. And I'd be like, well, a huge part of that is going to be the physical training. So I took a, a liking to that when I was like 13 and haven't really stopped since. On a film like this, uh, it seems like you would get really close to the crew and the cast. Uh, yeah. Was it a family situation? I'm beyond a family situation to the point where, you know, Michael's mother and father were there helping produce the movie, helping, you know, finance aspects of it at the beginning. I mean, they're just such team players. In fact, his father was the one teaching me how to fly and clocking me my first hours to, to get my license. Just, it takes a village and everybody who worked on this film, um, you know, they certainly didn't do it for the money. They did it because they believed, they loved the project, believed in the other people around them and truly wanted to make the best possible thing they could make. And of course we have Lionsgate distributing it now, which is fantastic, but this was made without a studio. This was made entirely independently until it got to distribution, which is um, it, it just it's so impressive on, on the whole cruise front. Yeah, it seems like a, you know, a, a much more expensive film than I think it was only because of the love that was poured into it. 100%. In fact, uh, I can't give specifics away, but I was at the premiere talking to, um, one of the special effects uh, supervisors. Mm -hmm. And he was like, yeah, we were working on this other, you know, $100 million movie. And he's like, truthfully, we we're supposed to have three months to dedicate to this. We kept going for another six months. We spent nine months working on it. And did we have to pull some of the budget from this movie? I can't say that out loud because I'd get fired. But yes, we did. <laughs> yes, we did. <laughs> like, oh, that's so good. That just means that they, you know, wanted to put their best work forward, but also loved the project enough Hey, honestly, I felt so honored in that moment. I'm like, God, I can't, I can't thank these people enough for all the work they put into this movie. In our final moments that we have, what do you think audiences are going to take away uh, from watching Wolfhound? I hope they they watch and go, oh my lord, that was beautiful. You know, from the aerial photography to just the the lenses we used to shoot it. I mean, there are moments where it feels like a Michael Bay film, but in World War II, and Michael B. Chait, our director, just did such a stellar job. Um, beyond that, have a great time and have fun watching it, you know, whether they're crying or giggling at moments, like there's a little bit of that throughout the whole film. And then, of course, if they want to have a conversation afterwards about this period of time and how we have to, we have to continue to tell stories about it, around it, even if they're fictional, giving respect to what actually happened so that it never happens again. It was one of the worst periods of time in human history, and it's something that our friends and family members fought for, gave their lives for. So it's, it's just obscene to me that there are world leaders who want to pretend like this didn't happen, like the Holocaust never happened, like aspects of the World War II just didn't exist. And it's scary. It's truthfully scary. So if they can take anything away from it, just keep the conversation going. And, you know, let's never repeat anything like this. Yeah, 100%. And, and uh, it's such a tip of the hat to those great aviator films of the late 40s and 50s as well. Yeah. Um, you you look and act like a hero, so uh, it's well, thank you, it's a great role for you, and and uh, I can't wait to see you in person here in Salt Lake if you come out. Yeah, man, I don't have my tour schedule in front of me. I feel bad. I don't know exactly uh, when or where, but I guess just, a big time rush official. We'll both look it up right after this, and then be like, just just oh, come I'm out on your good. own, and we'll we'll set up a gig and we'll feed you. That's that sounds all. good to me. I'm down. Right. I love it out there. Well, thank you so much, James, for your time, and again, Wolfhound. Uh, just an amazing film. I'm, I'm telling people to catch it. Awesome. Thank you very much, Tony.